we try to do this show here like once or twice a month um, so we can get guests. Mm-hmm. But we have a studio at the ramp, at my ramp too. But it's hard to get people to get down to Vista, it's to the warehouse. Little, it's a little bit of a ways away. Yeah, you know, unless, they, unless they're vert skaters, then they're all about it. Yeah. But all the vert skaters kind of live where we live. That's true. That's true. You, <laughs> you don't know, see so many LA vert skaters. <laughs> I, I can't actually it's even think of one. What's that? I can't even think of an like a, a Me. native LA. Or a vert ramp. Well, yeah, but you I'm transport saying, over I, here. I moved to LA and stopped skating. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Huh? I'm like, where's the vert ramp? <laughs> I remember one time somebody said in my 20 years of living in LA, the dude from Raids Against the Machine, the bass player was on. He's like, I got a vert ramp, bro. You should come skate my vert ramp. I'm like, in LA. He's like, yeah. I'm like, where? In, the, in Malibu. And I'm like, Malibu is like... Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch? Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value. Pistachios are known for their protein power fiber and better for you, unsaturated fats, or a combination that may help keep you feeling fuller longer. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there. I got the call that Wonderful Pistachios was a sponsor. Yeah. When I literally was coming back from the grocery store, had it in the grocery bag. You bought it. I I buy them. The best part, Wonderful Pistachios come in a variety of flavors and sizes, perfect for enjoying with your family and friends or taking them with you on the go during your summer adventures. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. Hey, Paul Rodriguez is here. Hey guys. What's up? How happy are you? I'm so excited you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, up. I'm really excited to be here. I'm happy to be here. I've been watching you guys' shows, so. Oh, really? Yeah, Thank it's you. been good. Yeah. How do you not age? Oh, uh, Dude, tell, tell my knees exactly that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, <laughs> now that you just put that. Well, give him a minute. He, <laughs> he did. He did twenty. How old are you? Thirty-eight. Yeah, he's wait. To, wait now from thirty-eight, and then see. Are you him. gonna curse him? No, it's, <laughs> I, dude, from twenty-seven to thirty-seven, that's no problem. It's forty-seven. The next, the next ten years are gonna be rough for yeah. me. No, it's not gonna be. <laughs> you can tell you're gonna do really well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Do you want steroids? I wish I'd be, I'd be a little, a little more ripped, and my knees wouldn't hurt as bad. Is that what? What do you feel the most from all knees, the skating? knees? Knees lately, and my hips for some reason lately. Uh, for know. some reason. Yeah. Yeah. You think that's mysterious? <laughs> yeah. I'll, we'll, we'll give you, I'll give you fifty-five reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I've been trying to like stretch them out. I think I need to start doing yoga, or yeah. something. But yeah, I'm feeling the aches and pains, but I'm holding up pretty well. Have you shifted your skating to? Maybe stuff that's a little less impact. Yeah, I'm kind of going through that right now. I still have a love for for jumping stairs and gaps and stuff, yep. but I noticed that after I do it, especially like in the streets, it takes me like I don't know a good week or so to even recover from that. So yep. it's starting to show that I need to probably focus a little more on getting more technical and ledges and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm trying to. I don't, I don't think anyone out there well, thinks you need can. to be more technical. Well, I, I figure if I have to lose one part of my game, I should like at least step up the oh, other yeah. part that's yeah, still there if there. I can. Yeah. You know, is that so, a is that a possibility? I, I think so. It's just yeah. it's just more about patience, I guess. That that's the patience game. At least if you're gonna jump stairs, you either land it or you get hurt. At some point, it's just gonna like it's not gonna go on for three four hours. It's just, you're gonna either get it or. Does it ever hurt when you make it? Sometimes, actually, yeah, that's I, that's the sign when I knew like, uh oh, things yeah. are changing. Yeah, because yeah. that seems to me is like at this point for me. I mean, I never was like a big stair ollie guy, but you know, back in my prime, I could jump ten stairs, no problem. Yeah, but now, like, I went skating the barracks with my kid a while back, and he was like ollie in the seven, and I was like, It'd be sick if we did a video if we both ollie the seven. No, and then as you... I was pushing towards, I was like, Hey, knees, can you not? 
fail me now. Like I was like, I, I still know how to do it, but I'm not sure if my knees are going to be cool with yeah. rolling away. And I was like, yeah, I did one, but let's not do two. Yeah, I, I totally feel that. And sometimes just the warm up ollie down the stairs is the hardest. Like if I go what? to skate a big set of stairs or a gap, and I, I'll try the ollie just to feel the speed or whatever, and I'll usually wheel bite and just fall flat and be like, okay, I'm gonna just try the trick now because I know I'm gonna waste tries trying to do the ollie. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta like plan your energy, <laughs> save your energy. <laughs> it for is the, weird for the that you have to be methodical like that as I you, know. you know, as you get older and or wiser with what we do. But true, I, true. I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, I always, you know, we never really got to talk that much extensively, but you were always a big supporter of our foundation. And I appreciate that. And, and I mean, yeah, going above pleasure. and beyond, like doing fundraising stuff, auction items, videos. I mean, back in the hey, back in the early, earliest days of the foundation, you were front honor. and center. So I appreciate that. No, th thank you. I, you know, I, I might as well, if I see people out there doing cool stuff and if there's a way I can support, I'm down to help. You know, if I'm not the one doing it, I can at least landa linda helping hand if yeah, I can, well, thank you, know? you i think i think your dad actually performed it once yeah he did yeah I yeah, 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 yeah i remember yes, <laughs> that's when it, it got a little weird not because of your dad but when we were the whole idea like the very first event we did was called stand up for skate parks uh-huh and we had people doing stand up david spade um your dad at one of them and at some point it was like these are families with young kids that skate the comedy is just not yeah, really yeah, hitting. Yeah. <laughs> Especially those two guys that you mentioned, like they're, they're not necessarily geared for the child audience, but it's kind of also hard to do stand up to young kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing head, we didn't, know? I don't think we ever, I mean, in the early days, we were just excited that, that we had support and that people were going to offer to do stand up and whatever it was. And then at some point it was like, Oh, this doesn't actually work. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I did a thing for a charity for, racehorses like where the people that take care of racehorses after they're done racing so they don't put them down or whatever like they give them places homes and stuff and my friend dingo was like hey man can you do stand up for this charity thing and i was like yeah man like as long as you know like my comedy <laughs> is, is <laughs> yeah, pretty harsh yeah. and he's like yeah of course i know you and then we get there it's daytime and there's a little stage and it's out where all these horses live and the the crowd are all in plastic chairs and it's families and there's tons of kids at the table. Yeah. And I and I tell Dingo, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing my jokes here. No way. I'm not saying that. <laughs> and he's like, well, you'll be all right. Just you know, just riff it. And I'm like, of <laughs> so I, do, I, I do remember seeing your dad go like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna skip that one. Let's do that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did a yeah. whole set on code words for what I was trying to talk about. Oh my god where the parents were laughing and the kids didn't get it, but it was, I was like, I don't want to do this ever again. No, dude, I can only, and, yeah. I, and just like as a stand-up comedian, like obviously I never tried it, but seeing my dad do it my whole life, like it seems so terrifying when you go up there, like, and, and it, you just start bombing. Like I seen him come off stage, like so, like it hurts him so bad yeah. if he has a bad set, you know? Yeah. But then you have a good set, you're on the biggest high ever. So like, the emotional roller coaster. So I can only imagine, like for me, I would, I couldn't. But you watch that, yeah, yeah I well, see it all the time. Seeing like, that, did it steer you away from it at all, or were you? No, ever interested it's just in that's it? not where my my gift was. You did know? you ever try it? No, never, never did tried it. Did you ever it. talk to him about? I I try to, but it's weird. He doesn't like it. He'll like, like skirt around the subject. I'll be like, Yo, Dad, so like, what's up with your like creative process? As I got older, I got really interested. Mm, I love yeah. stand up. I'm like, like. How do you come up with jokes? Do you like got a notepad? You keep stuff in? Like, do you ever just like wake up in the middle of the night with an idea, jot stuff down? Yeah. Oh, you know, I just been doing it a long time, son. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but like, like, how does it work for you? Like, where do you get your inspiration from? And you know, I I could never really get a clear answer from him, but I'm like genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. Maybe he he didn't think like I'm that interested, or I'm just like I don't know. I mean, it's to come it's up the with same as skateboarding, about, but... where like you know, you tell me how did you get good? Like, I've it's... just been doing a long time. That's <laughs> <laughs> but it's really. It's weird that he didn't try to go into detail, but there really yeah. is no answer to it. Like I've never met a comedian that goes, this is how you do it. Sure. That, and then that's how you do it. That's not how it goes. Sure, sure. It's just trial and error. Yeah, you know? yeah. I just, because to me, it's like, 
I think I've never seen him write anything down. So I think he just like has it all in his head. Yeah, me too. You know, yeah. So like you just have it in your head. You go, you try stuff. Like I look at it like he goes to the Laugh Factory and places like that. It's like that's his skate park. Yep. Yeah. He's going to the park. He's training. Then he yep. takes it out on the road, on the bigger stages Does and stuff demos. like that. So yep. like I can relate to that. But yeah, I was just curious. Cause I watch like documentaries on different uh, comedians, like Rodney Dangerfield used to write it down and like yep. keep them in notepads. And Jerry Seinfeld too, every day he would, his thing was I have to write a joke a day and, and write it down. I think on, he on keeps that too. Yeah, like, all it's, those notes. Yeah. It's different people. Like I know a lot of comedians now. And for me, learning how to write because I was watching people write like they really write jokes from start to finish and yeah. then they then they execute them. Yeah, and I was like, I can't do that. That's yeah. too much for me. But there's other people out there that come up with an idea and tell the story and then keep telling the story and tightening it up. That's what kind of writer I am. But it mm -hmm. took me like four years to even realize that. And it's similar to, I don't have a notepad. Like I have, I'll write stuff down, but I don't bring it with me. Right. I write it down. I go, that idea, you, you know that idea, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you get up there, do that idea and then do the other idea. Yeah. And then yeah. I, and then I work on them and refine them. And it's just like skateboarding where I don't know what it was that I changed but I know it's changed and I know it's better the next time I go mm -hmm. up and it always gets, a, it, I tune it a little bit more every yeah. time or I drop it and I go, oh, that bit definitely needs to go and this other bit needs to come in. But yeah, it's just it seems practice. like it leaves more room for like freedom. Like if you, if you yeah. it seems like maybe too rigid if it's It's like skateboard lines, like when you do a skate line, like to me, one of the best things was when I got good enough to drop in and I didn't know what I was going to do. It's going to flow. But I just flowed around the ramp. That's when you were like, okay, I'm on to it now. Yeah. That's what it is with comedy where you like yeah. change one thing, flip it, or in the middle of it, you're like, you know what? Not going that well. I'll do this at the end of it. So you're having like a conversation with, with yourself while you're talking to people. Do you ever find when you do that, like on stage, do you ever just, does your mind ever just go blank and you're like, oh, fuck. You know what's know crazy what is I would have said until yes, if you had asked me this yesterday, I would have said <laughs> no. Uh -huh. But last night, <laughs> I did that. You blanked. Yeah. Oh my god! How did you handle that? I mean, I did, I was not that much of a fan. People thought it was funny, and my manager was like, "You're so harsh on yourself. Like you killed it." And I was like, at one point, I said, "I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. <laughs> How is that good?" But I flipped it around because I was like, "It's." Well, you gotta flip the script too. You gotta be like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah so then I made up a up. new one because I had new jokes and I forgot them for the oh, first time funny. ever. So <laughs> then I just started making up jokes while I was on stage and two of them worked. That's cool. So I was like, okay, but note to self when I got back from the green room, I was like, maybe go over a couple of notes before <laughs> like, you go out there if it's new. Don't get a, don't get too cocky, huh? Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, babe. You remember that song? No. Don't do that ever again. <laughs> Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Yeah, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers an active ingredient as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Get it? Yeah, no, it's constantly happening to me. <laughs> the process is simple. It really is. I did it, so that should seal the deal. Sign up <laughs> at bluechew.com. I did and they sent it to me. So I yeah. think if I could do yes. it, you could do it. Yes. Bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Bluechew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. You could be missing out on the best sex of your life. Not me. <laughs> I knew that Not was missing coming. out at all. They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it, do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code HawkWolf at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HawkWolf to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we would like to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. This one right now, the one we're talking about, the one that you're going to go back to. I see my dad run out of material and then I can tell like he'll just start <laughs> riffing and, and just so you've watched him picking a lot. on people in the crowd. Yeah. As yeah that's I what older, I did. I started talking to people in the crowd. Yeah, I was like, just, you, sir. <laughs> like, that, just, that is a skill in itself. Too. Yeah. Like, yeah that, if, you I mean, can, if you can riff like that, I think that's every great else. comedian probably has to yeah. like, 
develop that at some yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, so. and well, and I don't want to dwell on, on your dad, but but for sure, he grew up in the time of when you had to struggle, and through hecklers, there was no, there was no direct path or or path that had been really uh, <laughs> that that had been developed right to success. So he was just in the trenches doing it, and probably learned how to deflect all the heckles. I think that's how he got into comedy in the first place is like he grew up in Compton, grew up in a real rough area and he wasn't like the tough fighter guy. He was the guy who learned how to Class like clown, finesse dude. through his yeah. wit and yeah. humor and like, you know, do that. So he kind of, I think that's was like a survival skill at first for him. Yep, for sure. And then uh, it turned into how his How did career. you gravitate towards skating through those years? I, in early years? How old were you? I was just shy of my 12th birthday. And I went to junior high school. Um, it was a new school for me. And I used to walk to school in the morning. It was pretty close to my house. And I just would see kids skating uh, in the parking lot before and after school. And I would just stand there like What year was that? Because that, feel, that feels like a year that was, was like, kind of uh, the underground days, street days. It was coming out. It was like uh, late 96, just before like, yeah, I mean, Christmas that's... 1996. Okay, yep. And um, I would watch them. And I, it's like when you see a magician do a magic trick. And you're like, how did you do that? And they're like, I can't tell you. And you're like, no, 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 I have to learn. How is it? <laughs> and I became obsessed. Like every day I would watch them before and after school. I would know that the certain group of kids wherever they were going to be. And I would just kind of stand off in the distance. Before you skated. Yeah, yeah, before I skated. And I was really shy. It was a new school. I didn't know anybody. So I just would watch them. And I would see them all year. Somebody would do a kickflip. I was like, I, it's something about it. I was like, I, I was obsessed. I need to know how that's done. How do you do that? I can't believe it. So eventually I worked up courage i started talking to one of the guys and uh, he let me like try it and roll around on his board and i knew i was like i, I want a skateboard so for that christmas i told my family everybody like don't give me a present just give me some money let me go buy a skateboard and and that was it i remember when you when people started recognizing your talents there was all this buzz and it was funny to me not funny but but it was interesting to me because um they kept saying, well, yeah, his dad's a comedian or something like that because their their generation who were your age didn't really know your dad from his big success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did because I was older. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, yeah, Paul Rodriguez, of course. And they're just like, yeah, I don't know. His dad's a comedian or something, but this kid rips. Like he's so gnarly. And every time – I mean that was for, for at least a couple of years before suddenly it was like, oh, there he is. And he's – you know." he's killing it and he's he's getting coverage and things like that but i'm i'm more curious about at one point did you realize you had it um you know thank god i was so young and naive i i didn't necessarily realize that i had it i just knew that i had a big dream you know i just wanted to be pro and in my mind i was gonna be pro and that was it so i didn't know if it was talent or not I just, I fell so in love with it. I couldn't get enough of it. And once I found out like, whoa, this is people's job. This is their career. Of course I want this job. I would never want any different job. I get to do what I love all day long. So that's kind of what drove me. So naively from the very beginning, once I found out there was a thing as a pro skater, I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do that. And I just skated all day, every day. Um, I just, so I I didn't just feel notice. like I, see, yeah. I saw you... You know, you see it very rarely, but you see people that just kind of master it, like you, like Costin, uh, uh, where it's like, oh, any <laughs> trick, <laughs> any trick, he's got it. You know what I mean? Uh, and he's got it. Even even if he's never done it, he already has worked it out in his head, like, oh, this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and I just feel like you, you're one of those people that it was so obvious once you came into your own. And I'm wondering if you ever had that epiphany where you're like, oh, I can I can figure all this out. No, not at no. all. I appreciate it. It's crazy hearing that from you. But uh, it, yeah, it just, you know, especially at that age, 12, 13, 14, you have endless energy. You don't get sore. Your body doesn't hurt. It was literally every waking hour and second I was either skating, watching a skate video, or reading a magazine. Even in school, I was just like thinking about like, when I get home from school, <laughs> yeah, uh, I know that one. What I want to yep. practice, <laughs> and I'm visualizing all day a specific trick or whatever. I used to make it is. hot pipes out of my mashed potatoes. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I would do so lines at dinner. Your close encounters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> basically close encounters <laughs> skate sessions That's insane. at the table. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but that's so, a good. That's like a. Because you're one of the more talented people in skateboarding, like athletically, people would be like, "Yeah, man, he seems to do it easier than most." I'm not saying it's easy, just. 
you see like a Danny Way type where I'm like, God damn, that you could do the but you could do anything. Like just looks like you've got it it's easier, but like Conor McGregor and all these other people that I've interviewed where it's like, no, I'm not the most talented person in the world. I, even doing this show with Tony, I know Tony Hawk. I've known Tony Hawk my whole career. But to know his opinion of when I was little, I wasn't the most talented. I was just obsessed and I went every day, all day. And it's mm. like, that's the real answer. People don't, you're not, bo- like Michael Jordan is not born, like, okay, his body is a good shape for basketball. I'll right, give you that. Right. But there was some kind of drive that was more drive than anybody else in basketball. Same with you yeah. when you're talking about how you were skating when you were 12 all day, every day. And I feel like a lot of people say that, but your version of all day, every day was indeed all day, every day. Cause yeah. that's the difference. The, the most talented is the one that didn't leave. Mm-hmm. They just stayed. I think the obsession is the talent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And if you have good physical gifts, that's a plus, yep. but you can, you can, like you can sail right that. up alongside it because I can. I've done it. I'm not athletic, and I I put in enough work to yeah. sail right up alongside right assholes like this. <laughs> Your obsession will compensate for yeah, the lack of for whatever sure. you have. And I think like Tony, maybe you can probably also uh, attest to this. Like not only when I was a kid, when I was skating, I wasn't just skating like oh I want to learn this trick. I was skating, and in my head it was like a whole fantasy land going on. Like in my mind. I was skating like I would imagine I'm skating next to Tom Penny right here and I'm going to get his back or Costin. I'm going to get his back. I would watch a video and then pretend like when I was out skating, I'm filming for the new girl video or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like I would like create these more epic scenes in my mind and yeah. it made it feel more important to me. And I, I would just so like I feel like that imagination was really key in pushing it because I don't know the rest of my friends. Maybe they were just like, oh, this is a cool trick. I want to learn. I'm just going to try it a lot. But to me, I put like a real like sense of urgency and importance to it you know put a lot of pressure on yourself yeah i guess but it was i guess i liked it it was just what i but it wasn't all that wasn't in the quest to be pro right that was just because it was just better yeah i didn't even understand what i knew i wanted to be pro once i found out pro skaters are but i didn't even understand the value of money and what that meant and getting pains for i just knew i wanted free stuff and i want to skate with my heroes yeah you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean like i just i was like cool i get all the cool boards and free product i want and then i want to like skate with eric costin i want to skate with tom penny andrew reynolds and like these guys and just be around them you know so that that what what really drove me you did um i mean you there was the i don't want to say right place right time because you were going to have your right time at some point because you were so committed to it, but I feel like there was a pocket there where you were skating with all those same uh, legends and probably very much inspired and and motivated by them as well. Hundred um, percent. And that was at a time; it was such a formative time in skating because you know you're talking about mid '90s, like no one was really skating, no one was embracing skating outside of hardcore skaters, and very few people were making a living. So to have been through that pocket of, of skate evolution probably benefited you. Definitely. I mean, the, where I was born. And there's no parks. You know, no, there was no park. I, I learned everything either in my backyard or at a local street spot, a curb, right. a school. Uh, that was like the beauty of it, the beautiful day. I didn't go to my first skate park till I had already skated for a couple of years. Um, Skate what was Lab the first in Simi Valley. Oh yeah, Skate Lab. Yeah, Sk- oh, Skate Lab out in Simi Valley. I, I have a like a love hate with Skate Lab only because <laughs> Skate Lab was the only uh, skate park in LA County zone for shooting. So you know when you do any sort of commercial work or Hollywood mm-hmm. work, it was always there because they they if they go outside the shooting zone, it costs them a bunch more. Oh really? Yeah. So for instance, if they were to go to the Vans Park in in orange. orange that's going to cost them double because they have to pay people to travel there they have to pay for gas whatever it's all complicated mm-hmm. so it was always skate always yeah yep. it was always uh yep. and they had no vert <laughs> ramp there 
What's that? There wasn't even a vert ramp. No, they had that ball though. <laughs> yeah, the ball with was a vert okay. wall. So that was always what. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm digressed. <laughs> but they had a vert. <laughs> He's having flashbacks. Oh my god! So I had to go every time I'd shoot a commercial. I'd have to shoot that vert wall. Yeah. And oh. they're like, "All right, do all the, you know." Yeah, do you nine hundred? Yeah, do a McTwist. Yeah. Do, do the kickflip. I was like, "You guys, this wall's like eight feet tall." Yeah. yeah. But okay. Don't you love that when you get on a shoot and like they expect so much and you're like. I don't got much to work with but here. It was, it was always best. Simi Valley, so I was always like, "Yeah, okay, we're going to Simi Valley. Here right we go." Back there, um, but yeah. but it was a it was a solid park. It was cool. Yeah, it it definitely was fun at at certain times, and I miss it. <laughs> I got a question. Your pants are pretty baggy. Yeah. My son is fifteen, and he's got baggy pants, and he's like, "What's up with your pants, Dad?" And I'm like. <laughs> So with your pants, Coop. <laughs> like I, I was doing that in the '90s. Like you ain't, you ain't special. And now you've got baggy pants, but I don't remember you ever going to tie pants. You stayed baggy the whole time. So now you look oh, like you knew the whole time it was it coming. Out. You did it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because you didn't do it. You never went. Did I you go a little went leaner? A little bit leaner, a but not, bit. not not too much. Right. But um, yeah, I kind of just. Just stuck with stuck to my guns, I what guess. What do you think what what do you think made you stick to your guns? Because I know there was people around you that were doing it. I just You're like, felt this like is my it, vibe. Yeah, I just didn't feel like it fit my body structure or yeah. something like that. I just felt it's like it funny, you're weird. He's taking it all the way back though with cargos. I know. Yeah. So, I mean, but he doesn't, he doesn't look any different, OG. but he still looks <laughs> fresh and up to date. Yeah, like thank you. Thank you. I don't know how you did that, but <laughs> that was a good idea. I just I know just, that. I just try to just match. I, I also <laughs> realized <laughs> your silhouette wouldn't look right. That's what I feel like. Yeah, yeah like if like... he had tried, it wouldn't, dude. Like if he's in a like a backside tail slide, it wouldn't. If it was just a silhouette, you wouldn't know it was him if his yeah. pants were tight. I felt like it had just been long enough to where, like, if I switched it up now, it just wouldn't seem genuine. It wouldn't seem yeah, like yeah. me, right. you know. And then I kind of just wrote it out, and it's kind of all coming back full circle. Again, I got so. stuck, dude. Like I got, I was like, ooh, tight pants. I noticed BMX dudes wore tight pants before anybody, and I was like, I'm kind of like a BMX skateboarder, like. I probably should have rode BMX. It's just, I'm not very, I don't have a technical body. I have a smash <laughs> and grab body, you know? So the, I was like, oh, that doesn't look that bad. Cause I got like meteor legs. Chicks like dudes that have booties. So yeah. tight pants don't, that's not a bad thing for me. But then pants got bigger again. And I'm like, oh, cause I noticed he did it accidentally just a little bit they're just a little bit wider at the bottom but i'm like you know what you did dude you got fashionable i'm an influencer you did influence you me go, so yeah. i try to get bigger pants again and i'm like man did i jank myself into wearing skinny pants for the rest of my life <laughs> like i don't feel right so you should have yeah i should have stuck to my guns stuck to, my gu stuck to your guns what i like, did well. notice so as i grew grew up and like develop a little more of an adult body that if you go too baggy you just look fat Right. I started like seeing comments and people were like, "Damn, you're already looking heavy." Like, uh, I'm like, "Geez, really? Am I?" And I like, you know, I think right, too big. Okay. Yeah, you start just looking heavy, so you got to find yeah, that so happy. Don't, don't, don't so you have cup. gone too big. I have. Right. I have. So I even I, I, P. Right has made this between, is not like, where I thought this conversation was. Going to be. <laughs> well, come on, man, try to mix it up. Like, <laughs> but I got it. Sorry. Uh, Do you, uh. When you're hanging out with primitive crew, I assume most are younger than you. Yeah. Does that influence you to, I yeah, don't know, any of your fashion sense or style or little, or even your skating? Definitely my skating. Uh, I I try to hang around the younger guys because they're the ones still really hungry and really like going after it. Most guys my same age aren't that hungry and kind of just like want to be weekend warriors and skate here and there and. Uh, I really like still want to be in the game, so yeah. I, I try to hang around with the, with the guys who are motivated. And by doing that, yeah, you see what their what their style is, what what they're into fashion wise, what they're into skateboarding trick wise, obstacle wise. Uh, so I try to keep my my finger on the pulse. Do they um are they influential in your aesthetics for primitive or your graphic design, anything like that? Um, some of them are like, there's um, a tricky part to, I know having a skate team for a long time that yeah. too many cooks yeah, and everyone's got their own directive, but you want to have something cohesive too. Sure. So it's, it's hard to walk that line. We keep it uh, like open, like hey, tell any of the guys, Hey, like if you have graphic ideas for your board mm -hmm. designs, anything you want to have any input, we're always open to it. A lot of guys, uh, aren't some are like specifically Frankie Villani, one of our, our younger pros. 
he's super into graphics. He loves art and drawing, so like he'll make his own graphics, and mm -hmm. we're 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 cool with that. You know, if guys wanted to show their personality, but yeah, you do have to like keep a certain brand aesthetic and not make it seem like it's all over the place. Right. But uh, um, I think uh, my my partner Jubal, who like really is like runs the look and feel of the brand, uh, does a good job working with those guys. But only a couple of them really are that hands on about it. Right. Yeah. Even myself, a, I'm not even. I'm just like I just want to skate, just make cool stuff. Because <laughs> like, you're not an artist. No, nah, I'm not. But really. you know all the people that are like Chris Miller drew his graphics and still draws for because he has that ability. Yeah, it's what like, they're into. Whoa, yeah. you drew that, man. That's kind of better than what I was gonna get for you. So yeah. off we go. Yeah, but that's rare. It is. It is, and I'm, I think maybe it's helpful for the brand if you have a guy like that. But you know, I fell in love with skateboarding. I'm the skater. I like doing tricks. I like being on my board so yeah. I, I try not to like step on the toes of an artist you know <laughs> I mean, yeah I what's been be the most what surprising perk of your professional skate career that came perk? from skating um perk or like meeting someone or an opportunity or a scenario oh man a nike commercial been with a lot of yeah, yeah cool, like, cool nike blessings. With ice cube and yeah. kobe is pretty big yeah that was that's probably like my peak highlight of like project was that, that I was did. that Nike that put that together? Oh yeah, yeah. Nike put that one together. I remember they presented to me like the idea of what they wanted to do, and I was just like, "Yeah, that would be amazing." Like, let's do it. I remember the first time I watched it, and I was like, "How did they license Ice Cube? Like, what?" And then there he is. There he was. I can't. Yeah. I couldn't believe he agreed to it. Got to meet him, Kobe. Like, in, the, in those same couple days span, like it was it was overload for me for sure. Yeah. I was like, these guys are in my commercial. Like, what yeah. is happening here? So that was incredible. But as far as like perk wise, I, I would say my favorite perk is just freedom. Like my, making my own schedule, waking yeah. up, going to bed when I want. As long as I, you know, I'm skating and I'm productive, kind of just having control of my schedule. I think that's a huge perk that not most people get to have. No, they yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. How, how do we get to that? Anyway. <laughs> I'm still trying to get to that. Well, it's mostly, you know, having kids and then. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I got a yeah, daughter. That changes now, my. Well, it's just more having to schedule skating is, is probably the biggest shift. <laughs> Definitely. Where it's like, I got this window. That happens for sure. Make it happen. I got a, I got a 14 year old. She's, she's older now. Uh, she's super cool and laid back. So earlier on, there definitely was a bit of that, but for the most part, still like, just just kind of free to do my my thing, which is really good, which is a gift and a curse. Because if I ever had to go into a structured life, I'd probably have a meltdown. So, I'm doing whatever <laughs> I can to like hopefully pray just to keep God and never off. have to have a, that so far much. so good. So far so good, thank God. <laughs> so, I'm trying to keep that going. Hey, I gotta pause this episode for a second to give you guys a very important discount code. So listen up, head to tryfume.com and use code HVW to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. And it's really fun to play with. Your fingers will always have something to do. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. Head to tryfume.com and use the code code HVW to save 10% off when you get your journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfum.com and use code HVW to save an additional 10% off on your order today. HV dubs. Oh man, that's us. Do you have anything you're working on currently? Any kind of video stuff or any print um. stuff? To be honest, not really. I'm 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 kind of going through a phase where I had to get my my life together. I was getting a little off track and lazy right there for a bit. So I'm kind of going through a phase of like getting myself back focused and like healthy and skating like with like real intent to get myself into filming mm -hmm. a project again, you know. Kind of got lazy there for the last year or two, to be honest. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't, did. Didn't look like from the outside. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. But, but yeah. welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. I'm excited. <laughs> it's, I'm on my like first week of I calling it my life reset. Oh yeah. yeah oh wow. Yeah. I was just I was eating a little too much, maybe drinking a little too much, not skating as much, not doing the right recovery stuff I need to for my body to feel good. And finally, I was skating last week and it was it was bad and <laughs> I, I i i finally got fed up with it and was like something has to change i can't believe i've let myself get into this point so <laughs> so that's that's what i'm working yeah, on right now is myself really. is like actually getting myself to like healthy habits and getting on point so that's my big as long goal. as you've got that you're fine oh, some people yeah. think that's a curse but i think that's a like when you think that you're like, wait a minute, this has gone a little too far. Because I think the diff- like when people put on weight, where you go, oh, I got a little bigger, and you go, ah, or you go, whoa, that ain't cool, and then you put it back, you take yeah. it off again. Yeah. Like to me, it's the same as you go skate and you're like, whoa, that ain't cool. Yeah. Or you go, hey man, I'm getting older. You know what I mean? It happens. Sure. Like you made the decision to be like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm going back into training because that's For the sure. thing. When you get older, there is ways to stay like you were in your 20s mm-hmm. it's just 24 7 you know, cold plunges and stretching and balance freaking plyometrics crap out your ass all day but yeah. it does help you have to fall in love with the recovery side yeah, of things wow. like, like it was skating yeah you have to treat it like oh i'm gonna go recover today uh so i was at that tipping point where i could have gone either way i yeah. could have really let it go or i or reel it back in so i, I think it's, I'm only like a weekend, so I think I'm. But you feel like you're, at the very least, your skating has improved. It's it's improved, yeah, because I've been making myself do the cold plunges right. and everything pretty much every day, uh, noticing that I'm feeling a lot better. Um, and and it, it, when my body feels good, then I feel inspired to skate. When my body doesn't feel good, it's like skating seems like a chore sometimes. As hard as that is, because you know it's what? not going to be as much That's fun. You, you know, guitar, it's never really feeling good. Yeah, it, so you always got to force it. There's levels of of feeling good. Like at least if it, you know, if, if, if it's like a three well, or four out of your ten, your baseline right. will change. As yeah, you yeah go. exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love I mean, to still put out a video part though. I remember there was a time there where I wasn't washed up, but I was still out of not as good as I used to be. And I remember other guys on the in the top three every now I'd do a trick where it wasn't that good, and I'd hear somebody go, I shouldn't name people, but. Pierre Luke, I love that dude, but I did something and he was like, hell yeah, Alice. And I was like, that was dog shit. Like, do not, yeah, do not yeah. flatter me. With, I get that. Like, that, was a, that was a dog shit, yeah. it was like that trick. Yeah. Don't, and, and now, cause it's, I got past the ego of like, dude, it's over. Like, <laughs> just have fun. That's all you've got. You 100%. mean, pray you don't go, you can drive home. That's what I want. It's driving in my and car. And now you're begging home. for that. You're begging for that. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now I'm like, if I do anything and someone's <laughs> yeah. like, hell yeah, I'm like, hell yeah. I'm <laughs> Go, <laughs> Ellis. I don't get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> I'll notice that even with this guy right here. Sometimes we'll be at the skate park. I'll do like a pretty basic warm up trick, and I'll hear him clapping in the back. I'm like, what are you yeah, clapping yeah, for, yeah, man? Yeah. Like, don't yeah. do that to me. Hey, man, I do that every day. <laughs> don't be. I, I, I feel that. that. Like when I'm skating with the newer generation of bird skaters, yeah. and I'll do something that is you know medium yeah it's and insulting like, yeah and i'm like yeah shut yeah. up yeah I, don't, I was doing I this don't in want, the 80s I don't want dude the pity, shut up but also yeah. like I, I don't want the, the pity party of no yeah you're doing that because you're old yeah. yeah and i know it's not but it does there there is definitely an ego thing where you're like ah oh, come on yeah, yeah. Wasn't that yeah totally i feel like that when i skate with the team or any anybody still in their 20s basically who's a high level pro i feel like i actually don't know how to skateboard anymore <laughs> i can't believe yeah. i've let it come to this like what happened all those years of training and practicing and hours and hours on end where did it go what happened to it It just faded away but that's the greatest coach to, you could ever have is yeah. someone that go like you go hey have you seen you lately <laughs> exactly you know what I mean? like exactly. Is, are you happy with that like yeah. how old are you you can do better you know you can do better 100%. and then you do better like you, you i, I ter- i'm terrified of the day that voice doesn't say something you know, like I get up in the morning, I'm like, hey, man, you look fat as hell. Ah. Like, no. Yeah, go, yeah. Don't eat ice cream before you go to bed tomorrow. <laughs> you fat bastard. Like, that's, I'm happy that coach is in there. That. For sure. I agree with that. And I, I know, like, age is a, is a factor, obviously, especially, you know, in what we do. But uh, 
when you know you still have more and you're not giving it, yeah, that's when yeah. it's the most painful. Because you, that's the difference. Like we're older and it's like, oh, we're coming back. No, we're not. Okay, <laughs> we're not. Shut up. You had so many comebacks. Anyway, <laughs> you are still athletically. Yeah, you're not like like we said at the start of the show. Your face hasn't fallen uh, off at all. Thank you. You've got I plenty of time, <laughs> but you better make it count because right, I got only a handful of years. That's what I'm saying. Next next phase where you go. Oh man. I'm, Little soft. I had too many beers on at Christmas. That there's there's gonna be one where you won't get back. So right now, yeah, I know you started. You can. Don't yep. give this one up. Yeah. No, no, no. I gotta, I gotta. You hear that, Mike? I gotta get foot on the gas. I was working on a. I was actually working on a video part, um, and then I broke my leg, put the whole thing on pause, and I just got back into trying to actually get back to that video part and to finish it, and I realized so quickly like oh this is the last one yeah you know what i mean like this is I, I can't i can't give them my all every time anymore but back then i was feeling so invincible and my skating was really good that i was like yeah, i'm gonna bang one out you know get get a video part this year work on something else and now i'm like oh this one is so daunting from from getting back so i'm only saying this because when you're saying i'm considering doing a video like if you feel good, get on it. Right, right. It has to be. It has to be like, like strike while it's hot. While while you have that energy and that skill. Yeah, you like, have to have the fire. For instance, I, I'm not going to do a video ever again. He's like, I got one more in me. I got. I got yeah. I got none. I got nothing. Do not turn the camera on <laughs> when I skate. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That might be a little bit like have some freedom in it though. I dude, I oh, it can't be liberating for I, sure. Yeah, I have more fun skating now than I did when I was good. Even though it's so obvious to me when I drop in that I suck, <laughs> but it's more he's there. I'm I'm like, hey man, remember when I had hair? You were that we were here <laughs> and we're still here. Look at yeah. your face. We are yeah. old. Oh my god. Yeah. Like if we fall right now, we could it's die. It's crazy. It's and then crazy. Kevin stops there. I'm like, dude, look how old you are. And we're like, oh my god, we're like old people with pads on. It's, it's legendary. It's. I, I hope to get to that that point. Oh, it's man. coming. Oh, it's a it's, time warp. It's, it's, it's like, on its way. It's on its there's way. There's an adult swim hour at my ramp. That's just a time warp. <laughs> That's that, cool. Those are the best sessions. Yeah, yeah. We're, I know. All, yeah. we're all like Cab McGill. Yeah. I look uh, forward to Kevin. that when like the uh, the 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 bad critic isn't in my head yeah, anymore. Yeah. Like of like, oh, it's still there. You know it's what I mean? It's just more of an understanding. It's more like a stand-up comic heckling you in your head then, at that point. Oh yeah, a little bit. No, yeah. we've definitely drawn those parallels here <laughs> many gotta, times. When you add the body and the injuries and how it doesn't respond like it used to, and then you do a trick where you're like, dude, pretty sure not many like people people in at fifty, there's like a handful of people on the planet. That can do what I'm doing right now. Right, even at like for your age group, like you're moving like probably 20 years younger. Yeah, you know, like think about 50 year olds. Like he does head high 540s. Yeah, and he's 55. Yeah. Like that's it 54. keeps you sorry. young for no, sure. I'm 55. Oh, sorry, 55. I see some friends from school that were the same age, and like you know, you just see them through social media and whatnot, and you don't really keep in contact with them anymore. But like. Life hits them. If you don't have that thing, yep. life hits you early. Yep. You know, people in their early, mid 30s just, they let it go. I see it on dating apps all the time. <laughs> single people yeah, my well, age trying to hit me up. I'm like, my mom is hotter than you. <laughs> just so you know. It's, uh, you know, what is it? You quit skateboarding. Uh, you didn't quit skateboarding because you got old. You got old because you quit skateboarding. Yeah. Yes. I agree with that. So we're, we're trying what, to stay uh, young. I'm, I'm curious about um, what tricks that you would think or others would think are super difficult or even dangerous that you got in your back pocket you can do all the time that i can do all yeah the, uh i feel like everyone has maybe a few tricks that everyone else is like nah i'm not I don't the want one that. that comes to mind would be maybe switch 360 flips like you know taking it down stairs or gaps those still work pretty well for me really yeah those those ones still feel really comfortable so I'll never forget. That's my claim to fame. Right I'll there. never forget when Andrew Reynolds sent me when he was amateur on Birdhouse, and he sent me a video of him doing that down like two stairs. Really? And it was like his body positioning. He he's like groveling on the ground, like mm -hmm. Baker Maker, but mm -hmm. but he did it, and I was like, I'd never seen anyone do it. I mean, back then too, that's crazy. Yeah, like '93 maybe. 
Yeah. But I, I just remember seeing it and going, he did switch the switch. That's amazing. The boss. And man. to think that you got that like that is, is incredible. It's crazy. Is it easier yeah. than regular? No. Okay. Regular still easier just for me. I do sure. have certain tricks like that though, but not tray flips. Um, like what? Like heel flips, switch heel flips. I, I could do way all day long. Way flip. easier. Heel not flip, not like, I, but actually just going switch. yeah, just switch ones and like regular heel flips. I could do them, you know, fair fairly good, but they're not confident. Like I'm not taking them down big set of stairs. Huh. Like switch heel flip. I won't think about it. And I'll just try it. You know, hmm. yeah. Wow. So certain ones like that. Right. That must be fun. I know. It is. It's it's fun. I'm I'm gonna savor the moment while I got it. So that's that's what I'm learning here Smart today. Guy. I've done one nolly heel in my life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it took so long when yes. I did it, I was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. "Fuck that true. Yeah. Never doing that again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it was dog shit too. Like, <laughs> uh, I was like, "I don't need to see the video. Don't play it back." Oh I no, I did. I did it ramp. Oh wow! wow. I did to nolly, fakie? Nolly heel front side air. Wow. Oh no, you grab? grabbed it. I grabbed it. Yeah. But hey, whatever. My board did a nollie <laughs> heel flip. <laughs> I'm claiming it. I don't care what you guys say. That's awesome, dude. Oh, man. Uh, I've, I've never really done anything on did the board. Did you ever ramp, go so. get into grab stuff? I can no. Benny Hanna. I could you do can? A, I could do wait, a mean Benny Hanna. Wait, that was like, when was the last time you grabbed your board? I, I did 90s, a right? Benny Hanna. No, within the last year or two, I, I did a Benny Hanna at my nah. skate park. Yeah. Like going down stuff? Just over Wait. like my little Euro grass gap, I did a mean Benny. Dude, that is awesome. I know. I, I could, would have thought you would never thing. be Super caught fun. dead in that. Bennies are so fun. I could do a, uh, I don't even know the names of them. Uh, what's melon. this one back here? Back melon. Melon. Yeah, yeah, melon. Behind the foot or in indie. front of it? Oh, okay. Like this. Wait, yeah. a mini yeah, ramp or something? No, just like, uh, like, like. Off launch ramps and stuff like that, you know. Okay. Yeah, I could but do no, wait, the double. Paul Rodriguez is, is having. <laughs> wait, yeah, Paul Rodriguez is having. He invented jump. that stupid <laughs> thing. <laughs> cannonball. <laughs> yeah, cannonball, you freaking idiot. Cannonball. But Guys, look at me. I want to know. Paul Rodriguez is having jump ramp sessions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I got a little, uh, little jump. Not like the jump, jump ramp. Just like a, I guess, launch ramp. Wedge, ramp. wedge yeah. ramp. Wedge yeah. ramp. Yeah. Uh, do like those ones. I uh, got it. Mean Benny, Melon, <laughs> Andy. Nose tail grab or cannonball. <laughs> Why? Uh, Why? I just to know how to Japan. You got a Benny. You got That's a Malin. That's your next video part. A Japan air would be would be yeah. Sick. That would be sick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. Mike Carroll's got a nice one. Yeah, we'd be cool. Oh with yeah. That. yeah. But I learned them because back in the day there was a skate park in my in my area called the Northridge Skate Park and they just had a big foam pit, and they had like a big roll in, big launch in a foam pit and like we would skate all day all day and then like end the session, going into the foam pit. Is that how you learn yeah, that's how I learned how to Benny Hanna, everything. Like we would just try the wildest tricks because you know, foam pit. It's fun. Yeah. I uh I never did a Benny Hanna. Oh, it's so I weird. think I got got one kind of like front side tail grab ish. You know what I mean? I never got the tail grab. I did them all. You did? Mm-hmm. I did Benny Bonga, Benny Hanna, did <laughs> Benny Bonga Benny... was is fake Yali. Yeah. Oh what? That was the yeah. first one. That was one. the first one, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I know, right? That's what I, I thought. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I was there, I was like, that there sounds when, way harder. I, well, I was there with Lester when he invented it, and he said, um, "No, he, he, he did that," and he was like, "Yeah, Benny Bonga." And then I go, "What's a Benny Hanna?" He goes, "Front side," and then he did a front side. Not first try. No, not first try. But right. then he was. It was all like because it all you happened. guys ate at Benny Hanna's all the time. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, was that the favorite restaurant or yeah, something? Dude, like, yeah, that's well, that, yeah. for us. We were, you know, we were coming up as pros back then. And so if we got a decent paycheck, we would go to Benny Hanna's. That's so cool. That was like our big They were like the out. richest skateboarders in the world. That's yeah, we, and we still are. We thought that was living large. <laughs> yeah. You know That's what I mean? That's so sick. So we would go, like, we would go to San Diego. I'll never forget, we'd leave Del Mar Skate Park, go to San Diego, dress like skaters to Benny Hanna. We yes. were so out of place. But Yes. That's so sick. Up. Like, how did that feel in an era where, like, you can still, like, name a trick? That's cool question. It just yeah. it was fun because it was just silly. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. And it's like it's like if you did it first, it's all yours. Whatever you want to name it. Like I'm trying to think like, like when someone came up with like the feeble grind. Like where was their head at with that one? Like you know, I didn't even know what the word feeble meant till I was like full adult. I, so much of that is is sort of, and I don't know who created the name or whatever, but but it was like. Neil Blender and Lance and Grosso and, and Lucero, all this Whittier crew, they came up with a lot of the names. In fact, they named tricks before it, they were invented. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. ho-ho. Neil created the ho-ho plan. He couldn't do it. 
He just said, what if someone did this? Yeah. And it, and he called it the ho-ho. Wow. And then at some point, Steve Chenier did it. That's awesome. Yeah, because I mean, like nowadays, you just like just say combinations. They sound like uh, uh, math I want to get back now, to yeah. names because uh, there are combos that I try to explain to people, and I'm like, I don't I don't know how to tell you what that is. Yeah, they're just like like math problems, like this plus this equals this. Yeah, like. and and it and it varies between the style of skater. Mm -hmm. Like if uh, I think uh, Chris Gregson is the great equalizer because he understands sort of vert speak, mm -hmm. but he also knows what street stuff. So when I explain a trick, he's like, yeah, 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 that. But but then he'll he'll throw me what the actual street version name of it is. I'm like I don't. I yeah, because vert skating has more actual like names to the tricks. Yeah. Skateboarding is just like front side flip, back side flip, like just the basic right. explanation of it. Yeah, That's because true. you guys started after people named everything. Yeah, true. Yeah. I guess like, yeah, when that I makes got sense. into it, there was no like you couldn't name a one eighty aerial after you. Right, They'd been right, done. right, right. Like right. A, a lean right. air is Neil's but name backwards because he's ah. the first Neil Blend is the first person to do a fucking. Lean I air. had no idea. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah, how like that's I always remember like doing lean airs and not knowing that and then someone telling me and then my brain going wait Mind neil blend is the first person to decide to grab it backside and go front side on it like holy this is because you know, me inventing tricks is just like i can't fathom it right and this guy is just behind me, just in front of me so this this happened while i was alive yeah somebody did a the first lean air that's crazy yeah um i have a question do either of you guys do you guys know Alan Gelfand? Yeah, yeah, the Ollie, yeah, yeah, sure. What's up with him? What's Doing fronts at Ollie's first trip. Did you? He was. You were there, right? Uh, I wasn't there, but he he well, he was from Florida. Uh huh. And he figured out how to do a no handed air. Um and uh, what happened? Stacy Peralta. I I think I'm I, I I don't have the complete story, but but Stacy heard what he was doing. And said, you got to come out here and do that. Because back then, the magazines were here in California. So he brought them to Marina Del Rey. And then he did it at Marina Del Rey. Wow. And Friedman took the photo, I'm pretty sure. And then that was the cover of Skateboarder Magazine. Was that in the 70s? Or I 80s? think 78, maybe. 70, yeah. That's 77, 78. Wow. And then it was like the Ollie and every, you know, the skate world, me included. I was a little kid. I was like, What? You can do a no-hand yeah. aerial. That's crazy. Like, where did that name come from? He, Ollie, uh, I think that there was, I may have this wrong too, but other people correct me. I'm pretty sure that, that they would go to a sandwich shop um, near uh, Clearwater, whatever skate park was that they were from. And there was like a special called the Ollie. And that was, he would always wow. order that. Like the Ollie sandwich or something like that. And he would always order it. I may have this wrong, but that's the story I've heard. It's a good one. Wow. And then they nicknamed him Ollie because he always ordered that sandwich. That's cool. Yeah, see, I wanna I wanna like but then, try then to invent Rodney a trick and come out, up with a name. Rodney figured out how to do that on, on, on flat. The ground. Yeah. Because back then the boards didn't really have years. tails, no? In seventy eight. Yeah, they had tails. They had, they had like, tails, but not but did. freestyle no board, freestyle uh, boards okay. were not like that, right? So the, the idea that Rodney could figure out the timing of a flat That's what I'm saying, like little board. It didn't have like the it had a little yeah, kicktail. Yeah, yeah. But 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 he it would a little kicktail, but then he'd put a skid plate on it because it kept his foot in place when he'd do wow. fifty fifty Caspers and stuff. Florida skaters, huh? Like, cause Rodney's from Florida too, yep. right? Yeah. What's up with the Florida guys there? Now yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, the, uh, Rodney's like else? the Thomas petty Edison plant? of skateboarding. It's a petty, a petty plant? plant? No, like a layback air foot plant. Oh wow! Yeah, people aren't doing that one too much yeah. these days. That one was. I can't sick. even think. Yeah, of what that is. Yeah, that was the cool. that was the precursor to the Texas plant. Now I'm getting into the weeds. All right, I invented a trick called the Cholito. <laughs> How did that go? Fast plant tail tap, and it's because I there was you could buy Cholitos at Taco Bell, and I was that's what I was living off at the time. So when I made because I, I was in the night it was in the nineties where it was like, uh -huh. dude, you can't name tricks. It's over, and I'm like, right. oh shit, just did <laughs> Cholito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my new goal. I want to be the the. A guy in this new era to to completely name and invent a trick. Please do. I got. I'd I got to think of a cool name like Ice Dry Americano, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you got to keep working on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite have that yeah, ring yeah, yeah. to it, but yeah. it's the Ice Dry Americano. Try, I tried to name Seven Twenty a, a Mick Hawk because after Mick Twist, yeah. and I thought it'd be funny. People said Mick Hawk fast. <laughs> um, 
and it did not stick. So yeah. you don't always get the to to the name doesn't always carry. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of people talk to me about Cholitos. So. <laughs> That's exactly right. No one's ever said, hey yeah. man, are you the guy that invented the Cholito? <laughs> yeah. Just so happens. Yeah. <laughs> they will but now. That's never they happened. Will now. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. I'm gonna come up with some, hopefully. Yeah. But well we uh we wish you the best on that. Yeah. I appreciate but, it. You could we, if you really wanted you to. You really could, yeah. Yeah, you could. I just gotta get creative and think. Yeah. Like, what way can you grind or slide? Do the or trick and then it. send it to me, and then I'll help you with the name. Cause don't do coffee, dude. Don't call it a freaking frappuccino. <laughs> Jesus. Frappuccino might but be also, better. It's gotta be. It, it 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 doesn't have to be, but it would be to your advantage if it was so complicated to explain that it's easier just to say, "Oh no, it's the P rod." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you but I, I don't. I'm I don't not know saying your I name. Want. I'm just talking about the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the trick. P rod flips. Whatever it is, I'm just saying it's got to be so complicated to explain. Yeah. He wrote like, I'm just calling it this. That's what it is. Yeah. And so I think that that yeah. was part of what we were doing was like, I don't know how to tell you. We didn't have enough trick names or devices. It was an open road then. <laughs> yeah. It was all pretty much wild. I I'm mean, going to, I'm going to do that though. The, uh, I'm going to name it before I do it. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to think of it. I did that. Name it. And then see, and then, the chill, yeah. and then I'll do a contest no, I, online. Who can do it first and send me a video of it? Remember, I almost. Oh, now it's seen. Then you're getting the name out there. You can establish it already. I remember, just, I almost yeah. made fast plant backside tail slide. I was going to call it the gay slide, <laughs> but I haven't made yeah. it yet. Yeah, well, you don't can still steal call it that, that. You got you got but you, st but you still invented it just because it hasn't been made yet. It's still invented, right? Like, yeah, how, but if, but I'd yeah. be if someone else did it tomorrow and said I'm naming it something else, I'd be like. Damn. Yeah, I mean, they but would, you already make... put it out there now. No, nobody's trying to steal my <laughs> stupid gay slide. It's called that for a reason. Because <laughs> I'm doing it. And the... no, Don't you, know, you dare! Well, you I'm working do on it? this video. If so... you... I swear to God, if you do See, that, I'm gonna kick you in your tail. broken leg, okay, dude. I, got it. <laughs> I swear, I will kill you if you do that. I did do it because I... you could do it. I know that's the most annoying part of it. Oh, like this? You want to do it like that? No, you know what? I, I tried a fast plant the other day and my leg is not cooperating with Good, fast suffer. Anymore. Stay away. <laughs> I, did do a, I did do a um, champagne back tail over the gap. I call it the Spicoli slide. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, carving over the gap. Yeah, Dude, like you on. are Thank you. such there a... There you go. I like you but see, that, that's just... But that is more just... Um, <laughs> selfish. Why? You know what I mean? Like, like, no one, <laughs> right? no one's doing. You a, earned it. No, no. What I'm saying is, it's more self-absorbed because it's like no one is gonna. No one's doing champagnes. Champagne is a backside Madonna. Oh, I didn't even. I don't even know what a backside Madonna is. I know who Champagne and Madonna. Do you know what a Madonna are, is? Yeah. Yeah. No. You don't know what a Madonna is. I know that Champagne and Madonna used to date. You know right? what dudes? No, on but vert? you know what a Madonna is. The trick. I don't think so. No, that's what really? he's saying. That's what he's saying. So. Could, yeah. Damn. Like, you know when guys do lean airs on vert and then they drop their front foot and then their tail oh, hits on the way right back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Madonna. That's a Madonna. So if you if you kick out the same direction. But going backside, that's a champagne. Oh. So I figured out how to slide that. That's so it's kicking on my foot whoa. and sliding it. This is but all his what fault. What I'm saying is it's all worse because no one is gonna bother to learn it. No one cares about it. You know what I mean? Sean Penn doesn't even care. Not, <laughs> but I'm saying it's not moving the needle. No none of the new vert skaters are like, yeah, I want to learn that one. Because they don't want to grab their board when they're sliding yeah. on their tail. But they they don't wanna get it. Is that where Vert's at now? Yeah, yeah. It's What's like that? They, they they don't want to grab anymore while they're sliding? Um there's a couple of people I mean, that do it, nose grinds and they grab their tail on the way back in. And I only found that out the other day. And I was like, wait, that's acceptable? And they were like, yeah, why? I'm like, because I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring it back. I didn't know that was acceptable. I, I, I was just, that's just not really the direction. Yeah, I can't, I can't I'm not saying there's some specific um, omission they're trying to go for. It's just more like that's just not the direction of what vert skating is. You know, right, like right. They're doing like, Kickflip, low C grind. We're trying you know to be I mean? you, like, dude. We're like trying to be yeah, they're, doing, they're doing tech stuff that's like flip in, sometimes even flip out. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, I feel like Colin's like one of the early ones who he like is. Yeah. Took he's definitely to vert he's, ramps. he is the yes. 
he's the he's the ground zero of yep. that yeah. movement on vert absolutely yeah. I remember watching him like oh he's skating yeah. it like a ledge like yeah 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 those guys and has been for 20 years the nose grind thing is tony i keep telling tony ev women everybody in skating now does stand up on the deck solid nose grinds backside nose grinds. really 12 year old girls yeah. Where I'm like, dude, like they what got is the this? pinch too. It's good. Wow. Up like, top, like, yeah. duk, 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 ink, yeah. and then nolly in. Wow. Everybody does it. Like, it's wow. nothing. Like, it's, and I'm like, wait, I, I didn't get that memo. That seems impossible <laughs> to I me. I mean, it's like that in street skating too, with a lot of tricks where just, you're, they're just doing stuff that's so mind blowing that is so basic now. Yeah. Isn't yeah, the stuff that going. was reserved for trying at a special, at a best trick contest. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, it's just now first and try. And maybe you're going to make it in an hour session. Yeah, now it's just on lock, now it's, whatever. Yeah, no the, problem. Some of these tricks they wouldn't even do in a contest. They're like, it's not going to score high enough. Like, you know, like so A wild. girl the other day That's... made a 720 in a best trick contest, and then like two months later, she did it in her rod. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that, and, that and progressed? That's, the, that's the kind of progression we knew in our generation. You learned a trick to have it in right. your trick list. Right. right. You know, it wasn't like you did it to get on video and then be done with it. It was very much like, oh, I got that. I've learned it. I'm going to do it at the demo yep, at the thing. Yep. And that's, yeah. Um, Arissa, yep. she, she did her first 720 at this one event during a best trick thing and then threw it into her, the end of her run at the X Games. Yeah, after doing a crazy ride, yeah, then so did good. a 720. Yeah, no, that's, I grew up in that same mentality. Like you wanted to have it tiled. Yeah. Like you wanted to be able to yeah. skate. Like if you can just do a trick once every hundred tries and you just catch it on film and that's it. Like for me, like I don't feel like I could even skate if that's how I was skating. Just to mm -hmm. do one trick, one time, capture it, do the next trick. One like I like to feel like I can like go over here, kick it, go over here, back tail side, keep pushing. You're you one know, of the like, first guys to ever do that. I feel like you just like you were saying, when people see it, all of a sudden everybody jumps on it and they can do it. You were one of the first guys where I knew people could do a lot of stuff on street, but if it's just a normal person watching a street contest, I could see how they'd be like, man, nobody even really makes anything. Right. But then an era changed, and you were a big part of it where all of a sudden 45 seconds of flip on this, flip out, and I'm like, wait, are you doing like eight different flip tricks in one ride and making it all every contest? Because yeah. I've seen you, dude. You just keep – and that, I feel like, turned – it changed skating contests. All of a sudden – Every very rare that somebody in the top ten would fall, and I'm like, what happened? It used Dude, to be whoever made a ride won. <laughs> but you did. You helped to usher in the the sort of unrealistic video yeah. game approach. Yeah. yeah, where people were like, oh, these all these combos aren't real, and then it was like, yeah, they are. Oh, it Thanks. made contests like it made X Games Street big. It made Street League big because if you had a, had it. A decade later, where eighty percent of the of the of the competitors fell off, mainstream a decade people before, yeah, ain't watching it. Yeah, no, it'd be but too if you're boring. doing a whole ride where you're like flipping this, flipping out of that, people don't have to skate to go. Holy shit, this is this is amazing. Yeah, and now you look at them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I know. It's like, it's ridiculous. <sighs> what a time to be yeah. alive. It's gonna keep going. I yeah. can only imagine the next five, ten years of what it's gonna look yeah. like then. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, I, I, I get curious. Like, imagine skateboarding in twenty years from now. Yeah. It's gonna be like I'm not even gonna recognize it. So I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I have a funny story. When when I was starting to come up and and sort of come into my own with with my confidence, and I was on Powell, but I was one of the. It was the early years of Powell. I don't know why I just thought of this, um, but I remember there was a. Big contest at, at Whittier Skate City, which was one of the main parks in LA. And we were goofing around. I was I was skating with Cab and McGill. And I set my board up in a in a like I went up on the deck, set my board up in a front smith stall and just came in. And I heard Stacy Peralta just laughing hysterically. And and then I came up and he's like, What? What in the hell? And he's just laughing. And I was like, Why are you laughing? He's like, do that again. And so I just did the same thing, like put my board in his front smith stall, came in, and he's cra he's laughing hysterically, like he can't stop. And I was like, why are you laughing? He's like, one day you'll know. And I feel like only in the recent years do I fully understand what he meant now, because when I see like Reese Nelson skating the vert ramp, 
and the stuff that comes easy to her and the stuff that it would, would never even imagine doing or trying. And she's just banging out and it's like, I laugh. That's all I can do. And, and seeing even like the, the, the heaviest street, you know, stuff where yeah. people are going through kinks and, and flipping and flipping out. I, I just laugh. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. Like for me, I feel you on that. Like I'm, I think I'm jaded or something now. Cause like, like, like for instance, last night I was skating my skate park and we had this young kid, Felipe Mota on, on primitive. And he was like doing a cab back lip down the big rail, doing that a bunch. And then all of a sudden he just cab back tailed it and he's just doing that. And like in my mind, I'm watching him and I, I remember thinking, I was like, I know this is gnarly, but like, why am I it like I, I had you're no jaded. emotion to it? I'm just like you're jaded. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. Like when I skate around, I, I've been fortunate enough to be around like all the best skaters for so long, and now seeing the new generation of all the best skaters, like I'm just like so like it's just so normal to but me. But I like, think it's also because you're you're so in the thick of also still being a pro mm-hmm. that maybe that's your mindset is more jaded. Like I'm a little bit more far removed from the career of it uh-huh. where I can just appreciate that. Oh, this is a whole new thing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm never even going to try or, or want to do stuff like that, but I can enjoy it from afar. Yeah. It, I, I, I think you're still in the mix where you're like, maybe I could. Hmm. Nah, not, not no? that stuff. Nah, I'm not, not, not with certain rail stuff that, that always scared me, but yeah, I guess I just, I'm so used to like, I'm like, yeah, dude, that's just what he does. Like, like I, <laughs> yeah. I know it's impressive. Like in my mind, I, I remember the, I know this is impressive, but why aren't I like mind blown? You know, right. like I, I am, but I'm just like, that's Malta. That's but what he does. Also, you know you what can't I mean? like, see the forest through the trees. You're yeah, so you're right. You're right. In the middle of so much talent. Yeah. It's like same, like with my ramp, I'm at the epicenter of, of the most progressive vert skating. So the stuff I see that they do every day, you know, like Jimmy Wilkins alley front side, all eight feet out. 12 feet across is like, that's just how he gets speed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, he still blows my mind, right, but, but you're, saying, you're right. Every now and then he does something where I go. Yeah. Yeah, it's normalized. Yeah, it's normalized. It's like, yes. I've, I've yeah. walked by and seen him do an Ollie 540 and gone, yeah, man. Yeah. Not. <laughs> ah! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause exactly. I've seen him do hundreds right. of them. Yeah. 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 I guess it's like technology, right? Like we should be like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe like I can airdrop you a photo or whatever face on. Right. It's just like, yeah. yeah, send it to me. We should just right, trade cool. places one day and you come to the ramp and see <laughs> what is be, basic yeah. there. And then I'll come see what, what's going on with the, you know, cab back tails. And I would watch that. Then they'll get the reaction. There we go. For. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Until then. Let's do it. Yeah. You're welcome hey, Paul, to my park anytime. Coming by our Dude, my studio. pleasure. Happy Appreciate to be it. here. Big fan. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm going to get a pair of those pants and then go see my son and just act like nothing <laughs> happened. Oh, these? I don't know. What? <laughs> these old things? Oh, these I've old things. since 95. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brought them out of storage. Yeah. I've had these since Paul started skating. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like and describe, dickheads. See ya.